What is happening guys? Jim the Game Guru. Okay, let's get into some Blood Rage. Awesome game. Vikings plundering, destroying, chaos, rage, destruction. Good stuff. This game is a game where you build up glory points. The person with the most glory points wins the game. I'm going to do a quick little simple how to play. Probably do it with three players. I'm thinking I was doing two, three, I don't know. Right around there. If you guys are new here, please consider subscribing or following. Now, some people have said this game is a gateway game. Eh, no. No, I'm sorry. I, I disagree with that. I think gateway games are supposed to be games that bring people in that are not used to board gaming. And that are, they're, for the most part, pretty simple and easier rules to understand. This game, even though it has simple mechanics, it will have rules in a, in a larger book that you have to read probably for about an hour. You sit down for about an hour, you read a manual, you absorb the manual, and then you do a little bit of quick test play. So even though it has simple mechanics in certain parts, there are other parts where there's little intricacies. So I don't consider this a gateway game. A lot of people have kind of said that. I feel like this is more of an in-between, a gateway, and a more complicated game. But it is a fantastic game. So let's go ahead and flip it around, get into some Blood Rage. All right, let's tear into some Blood Rage. Okay, so over here you can see this beautiful, beautiful big board. This is containing a huge play area for the provinces in this game. You have eight provinces around, and then the middle is Yggdrasil that binds all the provinces together for a total of nine. Tons of little miniatures here. Well, I shouldn't say tons. Good bit of monsters here. I'm going to show you in a second. Uh, there's some monster miniatures over here. We also have miniatures for your clan on the side. I said I was going to do a three-player game, like a little mini three-player how-to, but I think I'm going to do it two players because I ran out of real estate in on my setup here. I only have enough room for basically the two players. All right, so you get a bunch of miniatures. Every clan, you get a bunch of these miniatures. You have a warrior. You have a leader. This is the leader for one of the clan, the Serpent Clan. And then you have warriors, and then you have a ship as well. So this would be the ship. Every clan has a ship with a color of the sail that belongs to their clan. Really cool. Yeah, tons of miniatures in this game. It, it, it's The whole game is played with miniatures across the board um, when it comes to the battling and the pillaging. And then these right here are provinces that have been destroyed. And the reason why they've been destroyed already is because I'm playing a two-player game. Whenever you play less than four players, well, actually, I think four players may have one province destroyed. But anyway, from four all the way down to two, a certain number of provinces will be destroyed before you start the game. And what that does is it basically limits the playing field for the number of players involved. Over here, we have two clan sheets. And this is the reason why I couldn't do three players, because if I, I would need three clan sheets and they would take up even more room. And if that was the case, I wouldn't be able to get the age tracker that's up here and the Valhalla sheet on the camera. So the Valhalla sheet is basically a place where all your warriors go when they die. You will get your warriors back at the end of the round. So here we have the age tracker and these are basically rounds. So every age, first age, second age, and third age, they are all rounds. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the uh, one of the clan sheets. Here we go. So one of the clan sheets. This is the Serpent Clan, and I don't know what it is, but I have a fetish for female characters that are Vikings. I just love female Vikings for some reason. They just look so absolutely amazing and super cool. So this Serpent Clan is a female Viking clan. And what you have up here is you have a leader section here where you can place a leader upgrade card if you end up upgrading your leader. You have a Warriors upgrade card over here. If you ever play a, a, an upgrade card for a Warriors, you have three upgrade slots for your clan. You have a ship upgrade slot as well. And then you have right here are two monster upgrade slots. Even though it says upgrade, I feel like this is more of like a monster card instead of an upgrade. It, yeah, it's an, it's an upgrade to your clan as far as having a monster. 
But I, I don't agree with the, the choice of words here, monster upgrade, because that makes me think an upgrade to an existing monster you already have. Now, whenever you play a monster upgrade card, you're actually, you're able to recruit a, an actual monster to your clan. Here you have the rage uh, counter, or uh, not counter, the, the rage meter, basically. So you start off with a certain amount of rage, and then as you use rage for your actions, they all they go all the way down to zero. Over here, you have attributes for your clan. So this right here, this attribute right here, says how much rage do you start off with on every single phase. Over here, we have axes. These, this is the number of glory you get for winning battles. And here we have horns. This is your limitation for the number of figures you can have on the board at once. The more horns you have, the more figures you can have on the board. Down here are the things you can do during your action phase. So whenever you're in the action phase in this game, you can choose one of these things to do. Invade, march, upgrade, quest, or pillage. Some of these cost nothing. Because, like pillaging, for example, costs nothing to invoke. The reason why it costs nothing is because you're going to probably lose warriors or you will lose battle cards or something along the way. So there is a cost to the pillaging. It's just not in rage points. Quest cards are free. The upgrades cost you rage based on the strength of the upgrade. The march costs you one rage. And the invade costs you the strength of the character. So a warrior is a strength of one. A ship is a strength of two. The leader is a strength of three. So if you decide, oh, sorry, the leader invades for free. I, I, I keep forgetting that. The leader will invade for free because it's an ability of the leader on the very top. So leaders invade for three, but for free, but they are a strength of three on the board. So the only thing that's really gonna cost you for invading is gonna be the warriors for one, the ships for two, and any monsters you may have in your reserve, when you decide to invade with those, they will cost you the strength of those monsters and rage cost. So let's go ahead and put this back down here. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and populate this board right here with the, you. whenever you populate your clan boards, you're gonna put the, the little token. So every clan gets a certain token that belongs to their clan. So like this is the serpent clan token. And what happens is you just populate the initiating start of values. The starting values are on the far left. The other clan that I'm playing with for the other player is the, what is this one? This is the Raven clan, I think. I think it's the Raven clan. Valhalla, I already said, this was a basically a place where your warriors go when they die in battle. Let me pull this age tracker sheet up for you so you guys can see. So now if you notice there's card slots on the left-hand side of the age tracker, that's because during every single phase, you're gonna use those specific cards in a drafting process at the very start of that phase. And then once you get done that phase, you're no longer gonna pull cards that were in the previous phase. Here is your Saga token. This, this token right here, basically you run that up on your age tracking sheet. Now let me go ahead and pull these little Ragnarok stuff off as well because to get the sheet up here. All right, so this is the age tracking sheet. This is every round, and they call them in phases in this game. So you put the cards on the left side for one, two, and three. You put your Saga token on here, and it tells you what particular phase you are in this round. There's, and that's the one thing, that's one reason why I say this game is not really a gateway game, because there's little intricacies in this game, even though some of the actions are very simple, that are get kind of confusing because there's like, there's phases inside of phases. So you can you can call this first age a phase, the second age a phase or whatever, or a round, if you want to say it's a round. And then inside of that round, you have these different phases. And then inside of the action, you can take multiple actions as you go around the table. So it's not, so I feel like it's not as simple as a lot of other games, which I think would be better classified for gateway games. So. What this does is it keeps a track of where you are in this first age, right? Or second age or third age, whatever. So you start with the action, and then what happens is you go around the table, everyone plays actions until the rage of every person is down to zero. Once they're down to zero, everyone's down to zero, then you will move on to the next phase in this age, 
which would be down discard down to one card. And after that, you uh, evaluate any quest cards that you have on your clan sheet. If they are successful, then you get the rewards for those quests. Then you go to Ragnarok, which you end up blowing up one of the provinces. And those these little Ragnarok tokens right here, which have the name of the provinces. And on the other side, they have the, hey, this is fire and brimstone explosions. That's what happens. You put different provinces on each one of these ages. And then what happens is when you get to this step, that province goes up in flames and it's no longer usable in the game. Then you go to release Valhalla, release Valhalla, basically any one who's died in the game, all your warriors or whatever, your leader or your ships or whatever, anything has been destroyed that goes here, or even your monsters. That's one thing in this game. If you recruit a monster, that monster is with your clan throughout the ages. So even if the monster dies, the monster goes to Valhalla and then everything comes back to your clan at the very, at, during this release Valhalla. Okay, so let's go ahead and put this back and let me go ahead and put these Ragnarok tokens back here, just so we know. And the Saga token right there that keeps track of where we are. And I put these cards. I'm only gonna show you the first age going through because when you get to the second age and the third age, the same steps repeat. So it's not, it's once you see the first one, you're good. I mean, you'll understand what the second phase and the second age and third age are all, all about. Okay, so I'll show you some of the minis on that. Let me show you some of these monsters. Monsters are actually really cool. And here you go, you have a fire giant. This fire giant is badass. I absolutely love the way it looks. If I had one complaint about this game is there's not enough monsters. And that's one thing I really can't stand. I wish they had more monsters. I wish they had a monster pack that they can actually bring out. Here's a troll. Uh, here's a serpent right here. I'm gonna bring the serpent. There are other monsters you can buy that were part of the Kickstarter. And one thing about games, as most people know that are in board games, you have Kickstarters and then they have content on the Kickstarters that basically persuade people to come to the Kickstarter and buy. But then they never, they never pr produce that content again, which is super annoying. I mean, I understand that people get the advantage and here's a frost giant. I understand that people get the advantage of going to Kickstarter to the Kickstarter to get everything, right? If they put enough money, pledge enough money. I completely understand that. But at least make the content available after the Kickstarter, even if you put it in separate packages. I don't I can't stand it when they when they create content and then they just don't release it again after the Kickstarter. It drives me absolutely crazy. You can buy the monsters that were in the Kickstarters or separate releases earlier after the Kickstarter that are no longer being published and here's some additional monsters. These ones are not so much monsters. I mean, you have like Dwarf Chieftain, a Valkyrie, a Witch. These are more hum like humanoid characters, but in this game they are considered monsters. But yeah, I mean, you can buy some of the, some other additional monsters that were after the Kickstarter or even during the Kickstarter, but they are insanely expensive. I think like Fenrir, uh, the wolf is, the giant wolf is on like miniature market for like $80. It's insane, $80. And then there's some that are 30 and then some that are 50, but you only get one monster in the card for that monster to put it in the game. So I, I, I hope that later on they end up producing more monsters. I give another monster pack to add additional content to this game for the people that did not come in time for the Kickstarter. Not everybody is in time for the Kickstarter, but sometimes people after the Kickstarter want to get the content. And unfortunately, we miss out. Um, okay, so here is a token, a pillaging token. So what this means is that if I, if somebody were to pillage this province successfully, they would go up one on their rage meter. So like if this clan ended up pillaging this and got this, then this that meter would go up. And then as these meters go up here, they will increase your quota for how much rage you can get on, on your, during each phase. Yggdrasil is the one exception to a lot of the uh, provinces. This one, if you actually end up pillaging this province, you will get a triple bonus. You will get the ax, the rage, and the horns bonus, which is insanely awesome. But the reason why they put it on the center is because pretty much anyone could join in the battle. If someone tries to go and try to pillage the center, anyone from any one of the other provinces can kind of move into that and, and prevent you from, from pillaging that. It's the hardest one to pillage 
because whenever you start a battle to pillage, basically any player that has any kind of monster or warrior or whatever in one of the surrounding, one of the adjacent provinces can move their warrior to that province. As long as it's touching, it's adjacent, they can do that. So it's one of the hardest ones to actually pillage. Now here's the horns pillage. Whenever you pillage a province successfully, it flips over. So then the pillage icon is now present. Then that is gone. These tokens will stay on the board. They will stay on the board through the ages. So like, let's say if a few of them are pillaged, right? And they're flipped over to pillage, right? After the age is done, these will reset and they will be flipped back over. These pillage tokens do not change. They do not recycle. They are what they are for all three ages. Uh, this one is a glory one. A glory pillage so if somebody successfully pillages that area they get five glory here is your doom counter this doom counter you're basically marking the province that's about to go through an explosion through ragnarok so this is the next one that's going to explode around the side you have a glory counter it goes all the way to a hundred and you have these little markers for each clan see this little marker for each clan that will go around as you're getting glory now is this an area control game? I don't feel like this is strictly an area control game because there's def different ways of getting glory in this game. Sometimes you can get through battling. Sometimes you can get through losing battles. So a lot of times what you get is when you get these little cards here and each player will get six cards, ages cards, right? They'll have different abilities. Sometimes those car cards, like the Loki cards, the Loki cards will actually give you bonuses, glory bonuses for dying. A lot of the Loki cards. So these are the small little baby cards, which I cannot stand. I hate them. But this is an example of some of the cards. So like these, these red ones here are battle cards. You, you use these when you play in a battle when someone's trying to pillage. Here is a monster card. This will bring out a troll and recruit the troll. The strength is up here on the top left. This is a quest card. So whenever you complete the objectives of the quest card, you will end up getting, like for this one right here, you get six glory. So this one says what? Have at least four figures in Valhalla before Ragnarok on that age, all right? Loki's dragons, this one you gain four glory whenever a ship of yours is destroyed. This is a ship upgrade card. You play it down on your clan, uh, clan's card for ship upgrade. And then, then we have some battle cards here. But yeah, there's different types of cards. There's different types of strategies. You might have a strategy you wanna go all, all out and have nothing but battle cards in your hand, and then you're just trying to conquer, and then somebody else might have a strategy is, oh, you know what, I have a bunch of Loki cards, I'll upgrade my clan, and then I'll go into battles. I know I'll lose, but I'll get a ton of glory for, for dying. So that is a valid strategy if you decide to do that. Let's take a look at the manual really quick before I get into the, the gameplay. So here you go, beautiful manual. Now you will need, like I said earlier in my introduction, you're gonna need to go through this manual, probably about an hour's worth, read the manual, soak up the information in this manual. It's very, 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 very well printed. I love it. So it's, it's I mean, it, it's the print is fantastic. I mean, in, it's a good read, it's easy to read, not hard at all, but if you try to read this quickly, if you try to throw this on a table and try to read it really quickly in 20 minutes or whatever because you wanna hurry up and play with a bunch of people, it's not going to happen. This is a, a manual you need to read entirely before you get a group together. I know, I know I've already said this a couple of times, but I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again because I want to really bring that point home. Because I've tried that. I've tried sitting down 20 minutes and, and getting it set up really quick. It does not work. We had to go to a different game. All right, so it, it goes into like basic concepts, the manual, it goes into the setup, setting up the board and preparing your cards, everything you need to learn. And then it goes into the different phases within the ages, the God's gift phase, the action phase. The God's gift phase is basically the card drafting phase. And it goes into all the little every single little action that you can perform when you're going through your action phase. Upgrades, quests, pillaging, um, playing cards, etc. And then it goes into your quest, discard, and then at the end of game, getting additional rewards, and then the Ragnarok phases, okay? 
So there's a so great manual, of course, like like I just said, but you definitely need to read up on it and make sure you're prepared. Now, when it comes to the bonus, there's actually bonus glory. So not only do you get bon glory from the battles on the field or any of the card actions that you may have or losing or dying or whatever it is, but there's also glory when you move your counters over as far as you can on your clan tracker. And what happens is every time you upgrade a stat of one of your clans and you get it into the fourth or fifth position, you end up getting 10 glo more glory at the end of the game for each of these stats you've upgraded in this position. And if you end up upgrading one to the very last spot, you get 20 bonus glory for each one. So that's kind of crazy. So that's another strategy in this game. Let's say if you wanted to avoid big battles and you wanted to go to some of the other provinces, maybe other provinces where no one's really focusing on and kind of staying away from other people, and you're just upgrading your stats individually until you have all three of these maxed out, that could be another strategy toward winning because if you get all three stats, at the very last block, that's plus 60 bonus glory points. Yes, plus 60. That's insane. Now, obviously, though, I think during a game, somebody's going to catch on to that. They're going to be like, oh, shit, that person's already got one maxed out. They're going to go for the other ones. And then they'll probably start getting in your way when you try to pillage areas that no one else is going to that no one else is going to. Um, so, yeah, people will catch on. So in here, in between the provinces, you also have things called fjords, right? So you have a fjord here, a fjord here, a fjord here, and a fjord here. Now the ships, whenever you're playing ships like this, when you're invading, you place them on a fjord. That's it. One of these little fjords. They do not, obviously they do not go on the land. They go on one of the fjords. Now these ships can participate in battles on the two adjacent provinces. So whatever provinces they this fjord connects to, the two that you can get in you can participate in a battle so if you pay two rage to invade with a ship you can put them where on any fjord now the one thing though with these ships is you cannot move them they cannot be moved they cannot participate in the march they are where they are when you place them in the fjord that's it but i like the fact that they part they can participate in either province, which is really, really, really cool. And it's a good strategy sometimes, because sometimes you might put some figures over here and then slap a ship over here. And then that has people thinking, well, geez, they put their figures over here. Why do they put their ship over here? And you can use this like as a kind of an option. Say, okay, you know, later on, I might decide to bring more figures over here. But if somebody starts to try to pillage here, I might get into the action with one with my ship and the ship could possibly win a pillage battle if someone only has a bunch of warriors because this ship is a plus two right warriors are only a plus one strength that's it so if you have a plus you have, if you have a strength of two for a ship and then you decide to play like a battle card that gives you plus five and you have seven there it can make it very very hard for somebody to win against your ship i mean it's, it's very very possible it's, it's possible all right, so let's let's get into this. Let's get into this. We're, we're just gonna do a simple little play of the first age, I guess, to kind of show you how it's done. Okay, so this person here, we'll have the Serpent Clan go first. Now, I have the cards for each of the players right here on their clan sheet, just to, just so it's easier for me to keep track of whose cards are what. All right, so let's see, Serpent Clan, let's take a look and see what they have. They have a bunch of battle cards and they have Loki's Dragon and glorious death and troll so the, the thing with the troll i could pay two rage to invade with the troll now one thing is when you pay two rage to recruit a monster they are allowed to invade for free which is really really cool normally when you invade you have to pay the cost of whatever it is but when you recruit the monster, you're already paying the cost of the monster anyway, so they allow you to invade for free. I'm not gonna go with the troll right now because this one, this troll says, when this monster invades a province, destroy all enemy warriors within it. So I feel like this is better to bring in once you have another good group of enemy troops somewhere. And that way you can you can nuke them all at once and clear out the, the province, which is really cool. I might do a ship upgrade here. This ship says gain four glory when a ship of yours is destroyed. This is a Loki's dragon. 
So again, like I said earlier, Loki's, a lot of Loki's abilities in this game are favoring death and destruction whenever you lose or whenever you have chaos to yourself. So this costs two, two rage to, so I'm gonna bring up two rage, go from six to four, and I'm gonna place the upgrade right here on my clan sheet. There you go. Now the one thing to remember in this game, this is very, 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 very important, very important. Anytime your rage meter goes all the way to zero, you cannot perform a single action. Not one action. Even if the action is for free. Pillaging is a free action. Placing a, a quest card down is a free action. So even things like that, you cannot perform because anytime your rage meter gets to zero, you can't do anything. The only thing you can do when your rage meter gets down to zero is join a battle. If somebody's in a if somebody if somebody's in a province and they decide to do a they want to pillage one of them, you can join the battle. That's pretty much it. Um, and then maybe one of the cards you play will give you additional rage. It's possible, and then that will get you back into the game as far as actions. But anytime you remember that, anytime you get down to zero, you can't do a single thing. Before I continue to play, let me also describe the provinces. On the provinces, there are these little circles. These are villages. These are where you can place individual miniatures on. In order to actually pillage a province, you have to have a miniature already on the province. I mean, you, you, you just have to. And if whenever somebody tries to join the battle, whenever you're trying to pillage and people from adjacent provinces come in to try to join that battle, they there has to be a, a free open village spot in order for them to do that. If there's not, they can't. So the question is then, well, what if I have three, like this one right here has three three village spots with circles, right? What if I have three, three of my miniatures on there? Guess what? Well, when you pillage that, it's uncontested. You don't, you do not get glory battle or glo I'm sorry. You do not get glory bonuses for a battle when you pillage. If, if it's uncontested, if it's an automatic pillage, you only get the pillage reward and that's it. That's one thing to be aware of that you don't want somebody to start dominating a province with miniatures because if they do, they can get an uncontested pillage and automatically get the reward for that. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Some of these only have three spots. Uh, so let's look at this other clan. This other clan has a bunch of, uh, wow, they have a bunch of quests. They're gonna probably put this one right here, this, this Mindheim. Have the most strength in at least one Mannheim yellow province. There's two of them that are already blown up, but there's one available. So the reason why they're gonna put this one down as a quest, and I gotta find a good spot to put this. So I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put these cards here, but I'll probably put this quest down right here. Typically what you're supposed to do in this game is whenever you have the, the cards in your hand, you put them down, you know, on, on an empty spot. And then any quest cards you put over top of this clan logo, but I have limited real estate, so I'm gonna put the quest card next to the, um, actually, you know what, maybe I'll do it this way. I'll put the quest card on the clan logo, but put these other cards over here so I know. Putting a quest down cost was free action, it cost zero rage, so they're gonna try to go and try to complete that. So now the Serpent Clan comes back, what are they gonna do? Let's see. They only have four rage. So this one right here, Glorious Death. Have at least four figures in Valhalla before Ragnarok. Okay, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do that. Screw it, we'll put that down. The left, look, take a look at the other cards. <laughs> they are battle cards, they are battle cards, giving you plus bonuses to battles. And then the troll card. I'm not gonna play the troll card because like I said earlier, the control card destroys enemy figures whenever he invades a province. So I'm gonna wait. This guy's gonna go over here from the Raven Clan. He's gonna go ahead and invade with his leader for free. Invade with leader. That's the leader right there. So he's gonna go ahead and invade. He's gonna go right to Anger or Oda. I can't even pronounce that province. So why am I focusing on this right now? It's because they put down the quest card to dominate strength and one of these provinces this is the only one that's left. And this is also the province that's next on Ragnarok because of the Doom token. And since it's next on Ragnarok, you wanna be able to take the rewards of this because after this age, this province is destroyed. And when it's destroyed, you can't go back to it ever. And then we're only gonna have these ones left. 
That's it. His action is done. He went ahead and did that. Uh, so over here, what am I going to do? Okay, so I've noticed that that dude has played that. Let's make this interesting. <laughs> okay, so the Serpent Clan now is going to say, remember I put Loki's Dragon down for, that says gain for glory when a ship of yours is destroyed. Haha. -ha. I don't want to pay Rage to put another figurine here. I don't want to do that. But... What I might do, what I might do for fun is pay two rage. And now I'm down to two, so I got to be careful. Because remember, when your rage meter gets down to zero, you can't do anything else. I'm going to put, spend two to put a ship right there in that fjord. I would have loved to put a, a ship right here, but there's no fjord here. This is the only one I could have done. So I'm going to put a ship there. And why did I put a ship there? Because of this bonus of giving me for glory if this ends up blowing up. So now the other person is gonna say, oh wow. So he's got a, a two ship. Remember the leader's worth three strength. Two strength for the ship, three strength. So this could be an interesting battle right here. So let's go back to this clan here. Let's see what they're gonna do here. Let's see if we can do a clan upgrade. Uh, so we have two clan upgrades here. We have a monster upgrade as well. So we got Frigga's Charm, which upgrade cards cost you one less rage to play. Wow, and that cost is zero. That is zero to play. That's amazing. Or this one right here, Loki's Domain. Gain one glory for each figure re you release from Valhalla. I think I'm going to play Frigga's Charm because Loki's Domain costs one. This says upgrade cards you cost you one less. So that means Loki is going to cost me zero the next time I decide to play it. Yes, yes, please. So we'll go ahead and put Frigga's Charm down there. That in that spot. Okay, so now let's go back to the Serpent. Uh, okay, so we'll go back to the Serpent Clan. Let's see what we have here. Again, more battles and the troll. One thing that I should note is that whenever you go from one phase to the next phase, you can actually hold on to one card, only one card into the next draft card drafting phase. So with this particular person, I may end up saving the troll. I may save the troll until the next round. I don't know. It depends on how well. Because uh, right now, if I use the troll, I'm going to go down to zero. And I won't be able to do anything. So, um, and I can't really do anything anyway because I have battle cards, which kind of which kind of stinks. You know what? I may just pay one rage. Let's go ahead and pay one rage. We'll go down to one. We're getting into dangerous territory. But I only have battle cards left and the monster cards. So that means now with one rage, I cannot bring out the troll. I can't. And that's fine. I'll hold on to the troll into the next age and then bring it out when there's, there's more characters out. That to destroy. Let's make this interesting, shall we? You know, I'll, I'll go. I'll go here. I'll go here. I'll put a warrior there. It costs one to bring out. So now let's, let's go over to the Raven one. Uh, I'm gonna play Loki's Domain. I mean, I should because it costs me zero now from this clan upgrade, right? That it would be stupid of me not to. So that is done. One thing to note is anytime you pass in this game, so you. During the action phase, as you're going around the table, anytime you pass in this game, which could be an option, you may want to pass. If you do that, your rage goes down to zero. It goes bing. So you got to be careful when it comes to passing. I might have to pass here. I can either invade or pass. I don't know what to do. And I think what I might do is I might just spend my last... What was this one here? This was what? This was have four figures in Valhalla. Okay, before Ragnarok. I think I'm going to spend my last rage. I'm going to go down to zero. I know I can't do anything. And that's, that's fine. I mean, that's all I can do. Oh, you know what? No, I'm not going to do that. I am not going to do that. I'm going to use a free invade. I'm going to use a free invade with my leader for the Serpent Clan. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Let's go. Let's go right here. I'm going to go right there. And the reason why I'm going here is because I'm adjacent to this. So if, that's, if this person decides to go ahead and pillage this, I can move her over if I want to. Or I can go ahead and decide to pillage this if I want to. So let's go over to this person here. They've got quests. Have the most strength in at least one Jutenheim province. 
I don't think I want to do that. That's the lower, these lower blue ones. Uh, we have the Dwarf Chieftain. This one costs no rage to upgrade or invade. Yep. Let me go ahead and, I don't know, I might do the Dwarf Chieftain. Yeah, let's do the Dwarf Chieftain. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring the Dwarf, that's gonna cost me two. It, it's gonna cost me two rage to do that. Let's take a look at the Dwarf Chieftain. Where is he? He's probably, he's probably I think he's the little guy. Yeah, the little guy right here. And let's go ahead, we're gonna slap. You get these reserved colored bases for each of your clans, just in case you recruit monsters. There we go, we're gonna go ahead and invade. This dude has a strength of two, right? Oh yeah, he's got a strength of two. So that's gonna be kind of interesting. I don't know, maybe we'll go right here. We'll go right here with the Dwarf Chieftain. Because remember, whenever you do a pillage act, players can bring individuals from one province to another, warriors or whatever it is, monsters, whatever, from one province to the other. We're gonna go back to this person here. Okay, so this person, what I'm probably gonna do is, I think I might try a pillage. Well, I might try a pillage with this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna use, since I have my leader here, that's a strength of three, I'm gonna try to pillage this. So what you do is during the battle, you end up saying, okay, um, call to arms, call to battle, bum -ba -dum, bum bum. And what you do is you go around the table and you say, hey, who's in on this battle, right? And then as you go around the table, people will move. As long as there's an available village in that province, they will bring warriors over to try to battle. Um, so this person over here, I think only has two quests in their hand, right? So yeah, they have two quests. They're not sure whether or not they'll actually be part of this battle, I don't know. But if they lose that warrior, so wait, we have a three, and then if he brings this one over, that would be five. But hoping that this one survives the battle <laughs> in order to get that additional province later on. Let's, let's just have fun, screw it. I mean, I, I don't know if it's something that we would actually do in a real game, but I'm gonna do it anyway, just for fun. We'll bring this over. So this person's gonna get involved. They're gonna go over here. Now, what's happening is the Serpent Clan's gonna go, hmm, what do I wanna do? What do I wanna do? So they have a total combined of five, and this is three. So I'm, I'm not going to bring. So now, as you're going around, you can choose whether or not you wanna continue to bring forces in. So the Raven only has two particular members of their clan on the board. They don't have any other ones to bring in. So what you do is you go around and say, okay, do you want to bring more? Do you want to bring more? Do you want to bring more? Do you want to? No, okay, it comes back to me. When it comes back to me, I can choose to bring more in if I want. And then you go around, do you want more, 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 more? Anybody else want to come in? And then it comes back to me, I can put another one. You go around until eventually nobody else wants to bring any more warriors into here. Um, so what I might do is coming back to the Serpent Clan, they'll probably move their other warrior over. Why not? Let's fight for this. So Serpent is the one going for this. So this is a total combined of four strength, and this is a combined of five. Looking at this battle for the pillaging, this person has a ton of battle cards. So what you do is during the battle, you say, okay, what am I gonna do here? You gotta put one battle card. You gotta take one, ba every person puts, not well, not one, but one card basically, because this is the one part of the game that you can actually bluff. So even if you don't have a battle card, you can throw another card down just to make people think you're throwing down a battle card. Uh, what I'm gonna do here is, and it's hard to play this now because I already know what the strengths are on the table and what the cards are. So in reality, I would probably play this plus three, thinking that they probably have a battle card two to play, and I wanna win this, since this is four, and this right here is five, and I'm already down one strength point. And if I play the plus two, then what happens is they may edge out, edge me out by one, possibly, because I'll, I'll only be up by one. So I had to think of this being a real game scenario. I can't think of it in, you know, from my point of view of knowing what everyone has already in this little demo. So what I would probably do on this realistically is I would put tier smash down, which gives me a plus three, but I would, you put it down like this during the battle so no one can see. And then the other per the people involved in the battle will also put down a card. So this person over here in the other clan does not have any battle cards, but they'll put one down as a bluff. Because again, like I said earlier, you can bluff in this game. Now we go ahead and reveal the cards. Okay, ouch, this person obviously was bluffing. And that 
Anytime somebody loses in a battle, so let's say if you play battle cards and they lose in a battle, you get your cards back, which is really, really cool. So it's another thing that's interesting in this game is that you'll get the cards. The winner will end up losing their cards. Now, this person had three, four, plus three is seven, and that beats out the five, right? So these losing people on that other tribe, yeah, this cannot stay. I don't know why, but this base does not stick. The losing ones go to Valhalla. They have died. Bye-bye. And the winning ones stay here in this battle. And what happens is they get glory for winning the battle. What is the glory tracker set on for the clan right now? It's set at three. So this clan moves up three on the glory tracker for the battle they won. Now, are there anything up here that says gain one glory for each figure release? Okay, so there's no glory yet for this person for releasing the figures from Valhalla, but this clan will get two additional glory once they get released later on. Uh, nothing else, okay? So this card is gone. It's out of play, okay? So we'll put it over there. It's out of play because the, the winner lost this. Now, this token is a horns token, right? This is the pillaging reward. You flip it over to pillaged. This clan's horns go up by one because I successfully pillaged that and there we go. So it goes up by one, it's up to five and we're gonna try to make our way up to up this particular tracker as much as we can. That was that person's turn. They decided to pillage. Now this person goes next. They have four still on their board. They just have a bunch of quests. And it's not looking too good for these quests. So what are we gonna do? So they're gonna go ahead and spend one rage. Let's go ahead and bring in a warrior. We're gonna bring in a warrior. They're gonna invade and put that warrior right there. Okay, this next person goes over here. If this person decides to pass, the Serpent Clan, their rage goes down to zero. And well, either way, the rage is gonna go down to zero because if I choose to march, which means move all of my resources from one province to another, then it's gonna cost me one rage. So you know what, but I'm gonna do that. And why? Because the other clan starting to put their members on this. So apparently they want this for some reason. So let's go ahead and spend the one we're gonna march all of our forces from one province to the other, right there, okay? So we're gonna march them right there. This person's down to zero. This Serpent Clan cannot take any more actions at all. They are done, even the free actions, they can't. So like they have, I don't know if they have a quest. Nope, they don't have any quest cards, so they're fine. Um, now all of the actions left are gonna be by this clan over here because they are the only one that have rage left. And these are quests right here. So I don't know if they're gonna to want to do... Ooh, you know what? That's kind of interesting now. So here we go. So let's spend one. We're going to use another warrior and bring it down here. Right, no, screw it, right here. Well, no, I'll go right here. I don't care, it doesn't really matter. I'll bring the one warrior, put it right there. Now they get to go again because the other clan can't do anything. So they're gonna spend zero to put down this Jotunheimen. You have the most strength, at least one Jotunheimen province down here in the blue. And they will because it's, they only have their forces right here. They're the only one. So they're gonna put this quest down, which is okay. Then let's see what we're gonna do. Ooh, look at this, Alfheim. Have most strength, at least one Alfheim gray province. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. So they're gonna put this one down too for their next action. It comes back around to them again because they still have two rage left. So they're gonna spend one more rage. They're gonna take a warrior. They're gonna put it in one of these provinces right here, right? Wow, look at that. Now it comes back around to them again. They're not gonna spend the one rage. They don't wanna go down to zero because if they go down to zero, then they're going to not be able to do anything, right? So their action now is going to be pillage. So they're gonna be pillaging this. It's a free, uncontested pillage, which gives them an upgrade of the axes for the glory, right? There's nobody else. They don't, they do not get glory bonus for pillaging because there's no battle. So their tracker goes up by one. Then it's gonna come back around to them again. Now they go ahead on the next action. They're gonna go ahead and pillage this one because it's uncontested. 
their rage bonus goes up by one. So then they'll have seven rage to start the next age. And let's see, what else can we do? Um, so it comes back around to them again. They could choose to go ahead and try to pillage this area. They're going to lose horrifically. Um, let's see what we have here for, for battle cards. But I think I might do that. I might try to pillage this. And the only reason is because of Loki's domain. Gain one glory for each figure you release from Valhalla. Uh, so what well, we have battle cards here. So no, so knowing that there's this person has no more cards in their hand, the Serpent Clan is not going to play any of these battle cards. I mean, they're not. Well, no, actually they might. They might play this one because they can gain three glory if you win this battle. Th this is probably the one they're going to play. This Raven Clan is going to go ahead and try to pill pillage this, right? They have no cards to put into play for the battle. Serpent Clan is going to go ahead and play this. Thor's hammer gives them a plus one in the pillaging. They will win the battle. Now, this card says if you gain three glory, if you win this battle. So there we go. This character goes to Valhalla. There is no pillaging reward for that because the person that initiated the pillaging did not succeed. This person won the battle, and from this card, they gain three more glory. So they go up to six. So this goes in the old trasher that's gone, they won. They also get glory for winning the battle, which is three from their tracker, right? So they go up another three to nine, and there you go. Now it comes back to this person on the Raven Clan, and what they're probably gonna do is they're probably gonna spend their one last rage to move another warrior into play, just to set up for the next age, okay? So they're gonna go ahead and set up for the next age, and what is the province that's gonna be after this one being destroyed? Oh, it is this one, right? Uh, this one right here. So I think they'll move one right here. So now these warriors will end up staying on the board on the next phase when this switches over to the second age. So there we go. That was the end of the action phase. Now we're going to move the saga down over here. Discard down to one card. So this person here has two cards, right? They're going to kill their battle card they're gonna get rid of that they're gonna hold on to the troll card they're gonna hold this hold on to this for the next age so we go over here now it moves over to the quest part now let's see did this person satisfy the quest part have at least four figures in valhalla before ragnarok eh, no they did not they didn't lose a single person so they failed that let's go over the quest over here let's see did this person actually satisfy some of those have the most strength in one Mannheim Yellow Province. No, they did not. That is gone. They did not complete that. Have the most strength in at least one J Jotunheim Province. Yes, they did. They get five glory for that. Kicks them to five. Have the most strength in at least one Alfheim Gray Province. Did they satisfy that right here? Yes, they did. So they go up another five. So now this person's a 10. Even though the other person won the battles and they had nine points when the other person had zero, you can see how quickly it went to 10 for them. So that takes care of the quest part. Now we go to Ragnarok. Ba -ba 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 Boom! This one explodes. Pillage token goes away because no longer available. Ba Boom! Now with Ragnarok. Interesting thing. Anybody that's on the province during Ragnarok goes to Valhalla. They die, and this is a very glorious death. A glorious death to die in Val in, in Ragnarok. These two warriors, and I should say that one warrior and the leader, they go to Valhalla. And they gain glory bonus based on the age tracker for the Ragnarok, which is two glory per figure that moved to Valhalla. So they gain a plus four. So they go all to 13 now. The Doom token now moves to the next place, which is right here, the next province, right? And now what happens, so this we were on, we were on Ragnarok, and now we're going to go ahead and move to Release Valhalla. So these get released, they come back to your reserve for your clan. These get released, but remember, this person here has Loki's domain, so gain one glory for each figure you release from Valhalla. So these three come back to him, and they get three glory for that. So he goes from 10 to 13. Look at that, tie game, 13 apiece right now. Absolutely fantastic. So let's see what else we got. So that's that, that's gone. And now we go to the, this saga goes down to the second age. Now, when you get down to the second age, you're going to take these cards 
and you're going to do the drafting. You're going to deal them out to each player. You're going to draft, pass two cards around, the pass the hands around you. You select two, put them down, pass the cards around to the left, select two, put them down, pass the cards around to the left, select two, put them down, and anything remaining is garbage. Okay, so that's how you do the drafting. And then all the clan sheets now get reset. This, based on your rage stat here, is how much rage you go. So this Raven clan goes all the way up to seven because their stat says they have seven rage available. This clan right here goes up to six for their rage. Now, the one thing I can't remember, though, is I can't remember through Ragnarok. I can't remember if the fjord, the ships are destroyed through Ragnarok. I can't remember. I have to go back and look at the manual. I can't remember if the fjords, the, ship, the, the ships and the fjords during Ragnarok end up going. And, that's, and if that's the case, and then this ship actually went to Valhalla while the other things went to Valhalla too, then this person would end up getting two more glory points to be to 15. Um, I think that might be the case, but I can't remember. Pillage tokens reset. So there we go. That's the other thing I forgot about. The pillage tokens reset on each province. And then we do the drafting of the cards. And we go ahead and go through the action phases and yada, 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 right? Action phase. You do all your actions. You go around the table. You do your pillaging, your moving, your upgrading, your quests or whatever. And then you get back to... The discard, down to one card, then quest, Ragnarok, and then release from Valhalla. And then you start again, you go back to the third age. And that's how you play Blood Raid. But that's it, guys. I'm Jim the Game Guru. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.